Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. What color is the dust of the ground? Remember what we're going over. We're going over to see what the original man looked like. The original man who had that images painted over. So let's see. What does the dust of the ground look like? What color is it? The dust? Brown? And the deeper you go, it gets blacker. Right. So it's go it starts from brown and goes all the way down to black. So the original man was made from what? Of the dust of the ground. So what does that say about man? Was man the first man created look, look like us or looks like something else? Look like us. So now the book in Maccabees, it said that that image was painted over. Why would they do that? If these were the people of the Bible, why would they have to put their image in the Bible? Because they was never there to begin with. Hey, my sister, my brother, come and deal with us. My brothers, come and deal with us. We out here to teach our people who they truly are according to the Bible. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, you are the true Israelites according to the Bible. I know you've heard recently in the news about how there are several people claiming the identity of the Jews who happen to look like you and I. Well, that's who the Bible actually describes the uh, true Jews to look like. My brother, have you ever heard that information before, that the so-called blacks and Hispanics are the true Jews? Well, knowing that we are the true Jews, that's something that we must do. My sister, you got a few minutes to come and hear the word of God. Come and deal with us. You got any questions concerning the Bible? You ever read the Bible before? Come and give me an understanding of the Bible. I want, I want you to look at these pictures real quick. Come over here on this side, sister. Look at these pictures real quick. You've read the Bible, correct? Where do we read about this image at? Who is that? Supposed to be Jesus. Why you say suppose? Right. Why would they do this? Why would they do that? Because man wrote the Bible? Give me Psalms uh, 68. Who wrote the Bible? 68 and 11, I think it is. Man, yes, was used to scribe out what we read in this book, but it was inspired, all right? Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 68 and verse 11. The Lord gave the word. Who gave the word? The Lord gave the word. You hear that, my sister? We read the word of the Lord, right? Great was the company of those that published it. You hear that? So yes, it was a great company of men that published the Bible. Men like Moses, men like Isaiah, men like Jeremiah. These men scribed the Bible. Yes, but they were inspired by God to do so. All right, so it, there's a lot of works in a world that's inspired by different things. But this Bible is the inspiration of God. You want to know how? How? Okay. Give me the book of 1 Maccabees 3 and 48. How did that image change? How did that image change? You don't know? We're going to read an account of how that image was changed from looking like us to looking like something that's abominable. All right, read. The book of Maccabees, chapter three and verse 48. Bring it out. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen sought to paint the likeness of their images. The book of the law is referring to the Bible. We found everything concerning what God wants from us in the Bible, in the book of the law. There's a certain criteria that the Lord has set up for you as a woman 
and set up for you as a man. But what happens when we start to blur those lines and cross those roads? You start to behave and act in an effeminate manner and you start to behave and take on manly characteristics. What happens? Right? The Bible explains and outlines that to keep us safe, to keep us protected. But there were some things that happened concerning the book of the law. Keep reading. We're going to go there in a minute. There were some things that happened concerning our book of the law. One of these things was the heathen or the other nations. Come on, my brothers. Come and talk to us. Come and deal with us. The other nations, they got hold to our laws. They got the power over us. And I'm going to show you how they got the power over us. They got the power over us and they changed the way things perceived or the way the Bible was actually perceived. They changed your perception and they still do that to this day. You know how they can do that to this day? With their media. They can tell a grand tale. They can pay somebody $20 million to create an image to make you think that our Lord is white. But read, this is what happened. And let open the book of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. They sought to paint the likeness of their images. This is in the apocryphal books during the Greek captivity, right? If you go and read in the Bible, you go and read from Genesis to Malachi. There's a period of time after Malachi that's not accounted for in the Bible. Then you pick up in Matthew and you're reading about the Roman captivity. If you know anything about history, if you know anything about your Bible, those are specific time periods that we can point to with books that man wrote to say, yeah, the Bible is actually real. These things happen. The Babylonian captivity happened. The Persian and Mede captivity happened. The Roman captivity, which is still going on today, has happened. In the Bible documents those things. Right? But in that book of the law, the heathen thought to paint their likeness in this, in this book. Now, if the image of the heathen or the image of the other nations had to be painted into the book, what did they paint over? What was the original image in the book? Let's go to Genesis. Let's see what that original image was. Do you know who you are according to the Bible? Your, 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 your race of people that you belong to. Okay, you don't know who you come from, all right? How about you? Do you know where you come from in the Bible? The, the, the lineage of man that you descend from. What nation of people do you descend from? Moses and Abraham, okay? I want y'all to check the sign out while we get the scripture. Come and check the sign out. These are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's what we're here to do. We're here to teach the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians that they are truly the Israelites, right? That's right? So, if you look, the world calls us one name, right? But this is what the Lord calls those children. Bring it out. Are you American, black, West Indian, Haitian? You American, black, so you be from the tribe of Judah. You know who else from the tribe of Judah? Christ. The blood that flowed through Christ's veins flows through your veins. How about you? American black? Right. Let's read Genesis. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed a man of the dust of the ground. The first man on earth was formed how? Of the dust of the ground. What color is the dust of the ground? Remember what we're going over. We're going over to see what the original man looked like. The original man who had their images painted over. So let's see. What does the dust of the ground look like? What color is it? The dust? Brown? And the deeper you go, it gets blacker. Right. So it's go, it starts from brown and goes all the way down to black. So the original man was made from what? Of the dust of the ground. So what does that say about man? Was man the first man created look, look like us or looks like something else? Look like us. So now the book in Maccabees, it said that that image was painted over. Why would they do that? If these were the people of the Bible, why would they have to put their image in the Bible? Because they was never there to begin with. Now, we just explained something simple, right? Something simple to show you that this is really our book. This is our book. And the things that pertain to the Israelites, the things that pertain to the Jews, pertain to you. 
Do you understand that they took that from you? They took that knowledge from you. They tried to take that heritage from you. Because knowing this information, the world is promised to you. And the, and, the, and the only way to keep you from this treasure, from keeping you from destroying this treasure, from keeping you from, from experiencing what you suppose experience, like you're supposed to experience joy, you're supposed to experience wealth, you're supposed to experience these things. You're not supposed to have to beg, borrow. You're not even supposed to have to work. You're supposed to have servants work for you. You understand that? The most you have to do is say, um, do this, um, do that. That's your day. That'll be the hardest part of your day, waking up and saying, hmm, who needs correction today? That's how your day's supposed to be. Your day ain't supposed to be, damn, well, I'm going to get uh, some money to roll up from. Damn, I ain't got no money to get to work. Your day ain't supposed to be, man, I got to deal with these damn heathen. That ain't your, that's not how your day's supposed to go. But somebody tricked you. Give me Judith. Give me Judith 5. Somebody tricked you. Somebody tricked me. Somebody tricked our forefathers and told us that we niggas, that we nothing. Nothing's promised to us. So just continue being niggas. What are the culture? What, what, what's our culture? What's black culture? Murder. Rap. Drug dealing, gang banging. What? What is that? That's death. That's nonsense. We don't believe in that. We are people who are filled with life. Life was given to us, but we didn't want that. We got tricked by what was outside and started to believe lies. Read. Judith, chapter 5 and verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and Governor, if there be any error in this people... We're talking about the Israelites. This man is doing an assessment of the nation of Israel. He's doing an assessment to see where is their power. Where is our power, men, my brothers? Where is our power today? You and me and our people, where is our power? What do we do to get together to ensure nobody infringes on us? To make sure that we are straight. That if somebody approaches us and try to kidnap us and try to murder us, then we got a defense. What's our power? The gangster disciples. Communication. We don't have communication though. We don't we don't even have it though. It's non-existent today. So there's an assessment being made on these people to see how do we destroy them? How do we keep them at bay? Because once we start to come together and figure out our true power, guess what happens? They can no longer have the upper hand over us. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to waken you up to show you that. There's a promise for you. The Lord has a promise for you. Read. Now therefore, my Lord and Governor, if there be any error in this people, error or sin, if there's any sin in the nation of Israel, what's going to happen? And they sin against their God. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. You eat, you eat, my brother, you eat pork chops? You eat bacon? Do you eat catfish, crabs, lobster, crustaceans? Okay. How about um, reptiles, crocodile? You don't eat none of that? Alligator meat? Did you know there was a sin? Did you know that there was a plot to say we're going to keep these people in sin so that they never get that power? This is our power. This is the thing that makes us strong. It's the laws of God. Do you, why do you think a lot of our people suffer gout? Why do you think a lot of our people suffer high blood pressure, hypertension, diabetes? One of the things is we're sinning against God. Give me that in Leviticus. We're going to hold Judah. Give me Leviticus 11. I'm going to show you some laws concerning the things that we eat and what the Lord said we shouldn't eat. For a long time, I ate catfish. For a long time, I ate bacon and ham because it tasted good and it was cheap there was a reason why it was cheap why to keep you in sin read the book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7 and the swine though he divide the hoof so the swine what is swine big right though he what though he divide the hoof 
though he devoured the hoofs, because that's one of the criterias. There's two criterias for us being able to eat land animals. They have to one divide the hoof. Right? What else? And be cloven footed. Be cloven footed, meaning there's a split in their feet. They ain't got like five toes or they ain't got one solid hoof. They're split hoofed. Read. Yet he chose not the cut. He has to also chew the cud. A cow chews the cud. He has different compartments in his stomach where he processes his food more than once. Us, we only got one stomach. We eat, it go down, and then it go out. But the cow, he eat, it go down, it come up, he reprocess it again about two or three times. Three or four times maybe. And then he pushes out the waste. The pig eats like we eat. It go in and come right out. You're not really breaking the food down when you do that like that. Right? So the Lord said that because the pig does not fit that criteria, we can't eat it. It's what? He is unclean to you. You hear that? Of their flesh shall ye not eat. I can play with it. I can eat it. It's okay. It's clean now. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Well, modern science said if I cook it at a certain temperature, I can get all the parasites out of it. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. That's the commandment. A lot of our people like to say, well, what if I do this? No, the Lord said, don't do it. That's it. All right, Lord, you said it. That's what it is. Don't question the Lord. Don't try to come with no sneaky science because science opposes the Lord. Science is in opposition to everything the Lord said. Right. Science said, I could take a man, put ovaries in him, put a fallopian tube in him, and have him birth a baby. No, the Lord said I already went through that. I did that already. I, I, I created woman. I created man. Science said, no, I could do it too. That's opposing God. That's going against God. The Lord said, you, try, you look for Timothy? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, go back to Judith. So, they got us eating abominable food. The pig, the swine, he's an abomination unto you. Do not eat swine. If you eat swine from here on forward, my hands is clean. That's something you got to deal with with the Lord. All right? Let's not tempt the Lord. Let's not tempt God. He put us in this condition that we're in because of our disobedience. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Oh!